Well, welcome back to Moonlight Reel for some more magical things. For this episode, we're going to take a look at this very thin little yellow booklet called How to Become a Vampire in Six Easy Lessons by Madeline X. Madeline X may or may not exist. The story behind the book is that in 1985, this booklet was received by one uh, Jean Keyes Youngson, the head of the Count Dracula fan club, which was not a club for actual vampires, it was like a horror movie, horror book fan club. But apparently Madeline X the Vampire thought that Ms. Youngson would be a good receiver for her um, little ritual. And this is See, dedicated to my family by 1985 by Dracula Unlimited, which I presume is the Count Dracula fan club's own private printing press. The Count Dracula fan club is no longer extant. It changed its name to the Vampire Empire at some point and now seems not to exist. I will put a link down below uh, to whatever seems to be left of it, which isn't very much. But for now, I'm going to read this book to y'all. So I, this is actually the second video I've done on this book. In the first one, I only read parts of it because I didn't want to mess around with people's copyrights and Miss Youngson's copyright because, you know, it's her book. But I searched and searched the internet and it seems you cannot buy this little booklet anywhere. And you cannot pirate a PDF of it anywhere. So, I'm going to read the whole thing, and uh, if anybody minds, they can let me know, and I'll change back to the video where I only read half of it, and that should be okay. So, we start with the author's introduction. Although I worked out this program many years ago, it was not until recently, and in light of the spate of books and films about vampires, that I felt the time had come for its publication and release. In regard to my qualifications, it should be said that I was a practicing vampire until the late 1970s when I met and married a mortal. Two years later, we had twin daughters, neither of whom seems to have inherited my vampirism. Out of consideration and love for my family, I have for the most part given up my vampiric activities except for the occasional drink necessary for my well-being. Please be advised that I will not enter into any personal correspondence as regards this book's contents, nor will I be responsible for any consequences or situations arising from a successful transformation. Madeline X, 1985. So, this last paragraph simply means you can't email her and ask if this is real or what happened about it or any of that. But one thing that we can learn from this is that whatever kind of vampire she was, she was able to meet and marry a mortal without draining his blood or flying around with her entrails hanging out, we'll get to that, or anything else. So whatever kind of vampire these six easy lessons turn you into, it's probably not one of the terrible kinds. So that's good to know. Now we have an important box. For convenience and accuracy, all words from the ancient Estralees have been written phonetically. I have never heard of the ancient Estralese. It may be a magical language that just hasn't crossed my path, or it may be a word that the writer of this pamphlet made up. It also says, it is vital that none of the six successive days of this program fall on a Saturday. So you need to do Sunday through Friday, which would make it difficult, since some of these uh, things have to be done at particular times of day, so you'd have to do it You'd have trouble if you had to be at work or school at particular times. Madeline X also says, For personal reasons, I do not plan to discuss vampirism, which has resulted from suicide, unavenged death, murder, or those cursed by their parents. The next page here is the uh, ingredients list. The following items will be needed for the program. Be sure they are ready in advance. Three raw white eggs, black marking pen, clean white towel, a clear plastic bag, some vinegar, one raw chicken liver, which you do not eat during the program. Let's be clear on that. In fact, you don't eat, I don't think you eat anything during this program, so it is safe. It will not harm you trying to do this. You will also need some salt, wrapping paper, string or cord, a small owl figurine, 
an empty bottle with a slender neck and screw top, 12 grains of white rice, one black human hair, a gold ring, water, black pepper, and a mortar and pestle or blender. So those are the spell ingredients that you need. And now we have a little more introduction, which is so fun to read. Starts with the title, How to Become a Vampire in Six Easy Lessons. If you have lived an evil life, were born with teeth, eaten the flesh of a sheep killed by a wolf, have Saint Vitus dance, smoke on holy days, are a witch, a heretic, a bastard, or a werewolf, or are a close friend of the devil, you stand an excellent chance of becoming a vampire without my assistance. If none of the above apply, the next easiest way to become a vampire is to be bitten by one, several times. The problem with this, contrary to what a certain ersatz doctor vampirologist claims in the scandal sheets, is that there are very few real vampires around nowadays. Take this from one who really knows. And so, satis verborum, let us proceed. And a final note, it is essential that you follow the time schedules exactly. If I'd been more on the ball, I would have looked up Santus Vorborum, but I don't know what it means. And this bit here about a certain ersatz doctor vampirologist, I kind of feel like she's talking about a particular individual, and my memory says there was a guy associated with the Highgate Vampire of London who then wrote a vampire hunter guide and it costs a thousand dollars and you can't afford it and he was probably a fake but I can't remember his name I will look it up and put it down here and I wonder if he might be the person that she's referencing or maybe she just made it up so and that's that's all that's the introduction and then it goes right into day one. So there are no warnings, as in Doctor Strange, apparently the warnings come after the spells, and there's no real information about what sort of vampire you will become, or any of that. So shall we launch into it? Day one, the first lesson. Time is early morning. Prepare three eggs in advance by making holes in the ends of each and blowing out the contents. Dry the eggs and trim with several zigzag lightning-like designs using a thick black marking pen. Place the eggs on a white towel and make sure they are THE first thing in all caps you see on the first morning of your program. When you waken, concentrate on each egg individually for exactly three minutes. After this period of concentration, clap your hands six times for each egg. Put eggs in a plastic bag and place in a drawer so no one will see them during the entire procedure. If seen by a human, they will lose their power and you will have to begin again. My immediate question is, how are you supposed to concentrate on something for exactly three minutes without looking at the timer to see if it's been three minutes? But I don't know, maybe you can do that. We're going to move on to day two. The time is 10 a.m. when I have to be at work so I couldn't do it. Pour one half cup of vinegar into a glass jar with a tight fitting cover. Place a raw chicken liver into the vinegar and put the jar in a dark place. At exactly 11.30 a.m., retrieve the jar and remove the cover. Put the liver on a plate and sprinkle heavily with salt. Clap your hands 15 times, chanting, shall I chant for you? Penangallon, fenangallon, fororgallon, bidali. Hand claps and words must be simultaneous. When finished with the incantation, wrap liver in secure, securely in heavy paper, tie with string or cord, and discard. So you don't eat the liver, you just chant over it, and then you can get rid of it. Note says, please remember that all chants are written phonetically. So that's a strange chant. I think it means something. In fact, I know it means something. Whoa, and then my camera falls over. Sorry, guys. To see what the chant means, we have to switch from the thinnest vampire book I own to the fattest. This is the Vampire Slayer's Field Guide to the Undead. It is two inches thick, and it's wonderful. Uh, the author is officially Shane McDougall, but that's a pen name for Dr. Robert Curran, or Bob Curran, as he goes by 
on the titles of some of his other books. He's written a bunch of books about uh, vampires and werewolves and dark fairies and the undead, and uh, he's a very good writer. I recommend his books if you ever see them available. And wrong page. There we go. So here is the among so this is vampires around the world. I think this is the vampires of Java. There's a vampire called the Penangalan, which is the uh, the name in the chant. Flipping back to see which. Uh, so this is vampires of Malawi, I think, which is a tiny country in Africa. Nope. Where are we? Uh, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. So this is under vampires of Malaysia which is in the east on two islands. They're Sulawesi, so, um, yeah. And we have the Penangalan, one of the most gruesome vampires in the entire world. I'm going to read you all about it. These bizarre creatures are created when women are startled during deep prayer. The shock causes their heads to leap off their bodies, dragging along their entrails and a twisted spine. These women become vampires and remain in this disgusting form throughout their immortal lives. So all you have to do is get surprised and you'll turn into a vampire, but not the kind you're going to want to turn into. The Pen and Gallon generally dwell in trees and possess the ability to fly. The creature's flapping entrails drip a noxious fluid that's be that spreads pestilence and disease. Should a penangalan linger too long in one place, the pooling fluids from its entrails will transform into a thorny bioluminescent plant. I wonder if in Malawi there is a thorny bioluminescent plant that has sort of inspired this legend. That would be really cool. The penangalan preys on the blood of newborn babies or pregnant women. Sometimes it will force a pregnant woman to give birth so it can devour the newborn child. Pen and Gallon are also thought to drain a mother's breasts of milk or pollute the milk so that the nursing child will grow, will grow sick. To combat this, mothers should be given milk thistle, which is a plant. A plant that has a variety of curative powers, including stimulating the production of breast milk. I wonder if it really does or if that's just the legend. All pregnant women and young children are kept inside at night to keep them safe from a Pen and Gallon's attack. A hunting pen and gallon will flit from house to house looking for children or pregnant women uh, in homes that are not properly protected. Malaysian women who fear the coming of a pen and gallon will strew dried thistle along their window sills. The vampire will not come near these sharp thorns, fearing to get them caught in her entrails. So gross. There are also rare cases where a witch will become a pen and gallon by choice. When a witch pen and gallon returns to her secret lair, she can immerse herself in a vat of vinegar and shrink her distorted self into a size that can be squeezed back into her body. Therefore, during daylight hours, she will look and act normal, but come sunset, the monster will emerge once more. So that's the pen and gallon that has inspired this chant for day two. Not something you really want to turn into, flying with all your insides hanging out. Let's move on to day three, the third lesson. The time is noon exactly. Place a small owl figurine on a bare table in front of you. Make sure you are sitting on a straight hardback chair. Make a tent with your hands over the owl and with deep concentration repeat the following incantation aloud six times. Pontenasco, Pontenac, listen to this plea. Rise from soil and grave mold now, hearken well to me. If you have concentrated hard enough, one or both of the owl's eyes may appear to blink. Do not be afraid, for this is a sure sign that you have done the spells correctly so far. Upon completion of the exercise, place the owl on the highest shelf of the smallest closet in your home. The owl can be used only once, as its power will now be completely gone. So we have another chant, and in fact we have another vampire to read about. So the chant says the Pontanasque or Pontanac, 
and I would say this is one of the vampires of Java and is called the Pontianak. It is not this. This is an anime vampire illustration from the previous chapter. So I'll read you about the Pon Pontianak. Java shares many of its folk tales with Malaysia, since they're right next to each other. One of the most terrifying legends is that of the bloodthirsty Pontianak. Like the Kudlak of Croatia, the Babylonian Ekimu, and the, oh heavens, Chihuateteo of Mexico, the Pontianak is created from a stillbirth or woman who dies while giving birth. This tragedy breeds a monster of particularly violent appetite. It takes the form of a beautiful woman who entices men or mimics the cry of a lost child to lure concerned adults into dark places. What waits for them there is a creature with wicked talons and sharp fangs. The Pontianak slashes and rends its victims' stomachs with its teeth and claws, drinking the welling blood and feasting on the flesh. Since destroying the Pontianak is so difficult, they are even more fierce when cornered, the best tactic is to prevent their creation in the first place. Proper medical attention for pregnant women is vital to prevent birth catastrophes. We can all agree on that. If a woman or child dies during delivery, the corpse's mouth will be filled with glass beads to prevent a Pontianak from uttering its plaintive and irresistible cry. Eggs are placed in the armpits and steel needles thrust through the palms, essentially crippling the Pontianak's ability to fly. So they don't really say what it looks like, other than it can apparently fly and it has big teeth and claws. So that's the Pontianak. It's kind of, it's sort of hard to tell what it's really like, but yet another South Asian vampire that has inspired one of these chants. And we're back for day four, the fourth lesson. The time is 6 p.m. Take a bottle with screw top and narrow neck and place 12 grains of white rice and one black human hair in all caps inside. Shake the bottle in your right hand in unison with this chant. Blood of man must have its use, blood of bat and venom juice, blood of flies and blood of air, I shake this rice and piece of hair. O oh, Poolong imp, I beg of thee, a vampire true is what I'd be. I shake this rice and hair of man, the magic words are Poolong Pan, which sounds like a Chinese restaurant dish. When finished with right hand, repeat using left hand. Remove rice and hair and discard. Keep the bottle for use in the final day's spell. So we have another strange, the Poolong Imp, which sounds to me like fake Chinese, but it is in fact, can you guess, yet another interesting uh, vampire from the same chapter as the Penangalan. So where were we? We were in Malaysia, and we remain in Malaysia. And this is listed under the vamp... <laughs> A team of two, a vampire team of two, listed under the name of the Pelisit. And I'm going to read you it because the Poolong Imp is part of the Pelisit's story. Vampires take many forms around the world, and quite a few are found in Malaysia. From animal vampires to the troubled ghosts of children to one of the strangest of all, symbiotic vampires. The Pelisit and the Polong are two blood drinkers that team up to overwhelm and destroy a victim from within. The pellicet arrives first, usually in the form of a house cricket. It burrows into a victim's head and begins to feed on the blood of the host. At the same time, it causes erratic behavior and madness in the victim, causing the person to rant and rave, often for some inexplicable reason about cats. That's very strange. Once thus entrenched, the pellicet invites a second creature, a bottle imp called a polong. So a bottle with rice and hair is where the polong would live, I guess. The second creature is even stranger, appearing as a one-inch tall woman. And now I'm picturing the tiny twins in all the Mothra movies, remember them? They could be polongs. No, they're fairies. These two creatures are fashioned by a witch when the witch murders a man and fills a bottle with his blood. The witch then casts various spells over the bottle, and then when the enchantment is done, the creatures are manifested in the physical world. 
Often these creatures are sent to a specific victim at the witch's direction. The terms of the witch's bargain are simple. The polong, with the aid of the pelicit, attacks the victim in exchange for being allowed to feed on the victim's living blood. When they are not feeding on an enemy, the imps must be fed by the witch with his or her own blood. If the pelicit and polong are not properly are not properly, they will turn, are not properly fed, I assume, they will turn on their creator. So this is a strange one. This is a, a vampire double team summoned by a Malaysian witch. Once again, not a vampire you'd really want to turn into or hang out with. So I'm not sure about that. But we're going to move on to day five, the fifth lesson. Time is 10 o'clock p.m. Clasp a gold ring tightly in your right fist. Take 10 steps forward and stop. Wave fist in circles above head, chanting, With this gold ring I offer myself without condition. I am prepared and I am ready. I have no chains or ties that bind me to this life. I beg you to accept me as your own. If deemed worthy, I will follow to the ends of all eternity and share with you forever the promised and eternal life. Repeat the chant with the ring in your left fist. When finished, return the ring to its rightful place. So we don't have to steal a ring, that's good. I kind of like this. I mean, you look darn silly waving your fist above your head. I hope you do it indoors or all the neighbors are going to watch. But this is a, a real spell, sort of. I mean, it reads like a spell. I don't know. What am I saying? The other thing is, who are we talking to? Are we talking to the devil? Are we talking to the master vampire, like in Buffy? That's sort of a mystery. I don't know that I would offer myself without condition to a mysterious entity that I knew nothing of. And there's one more page. The sixth lesson, and then the warnings come after the spells. Oh, maybe not. It's blank. So let's read day six, the sixth lesson. Time is between 11 p.m. and midnight. Get the bottle from the fourth day's exercise and pour in half a cup of water. Add a quarter teaspoon black pepper and shake well. Grind the eggshells from the first day's exercise with a mortar and pestle or blender and add to the mixture. Shake well and carry outside. Pour the mixture on NAKED SOIL in all caps while reciting the following. Oh boy, more chants. My voice is getting tired. Okay. From my grave I will wander. I will not grieve the severed links. I will love the groom I have chosen and will drink his lifeblood forever. If my race is one, young and old neath my vengeance will sink. I will fear naught but the cross. I will heed none but the master and will live forever in his shadow. O oh, master, I am yours. Discard the empty bottle and retire. If these instructions have been followed to the letter in all caps and to the master's satisfaction, you will awaken the following night as a vampire. And that's it. There's no more. It's the world's skinniest little book. So one thing I do not know is if anybody has ever actually tried this. If you Google how to become a vampire in six easy lessons, and I Googled it a lot trying to find a place I could tell you guys where to buy your own copy, you will see there are some Google Books mentions of it. And apparently one guy did try it. <coughs> but while trying it, he also told people who he was trying it, and that might have canceled out the magic for him. It doesn't seem to have worked for him. And from my reading of it, I don't know. I don't know if it would work. I'm not going to try it myself because I just, I don't think I have the right kind of soul to be a vampire. I don't think it would work for me because I'm a different kind of magical being, I guess. But if you want to try it, it's safe. You're not going to hurt yourself unless it works. And if it works, you will apparently become a type of vampire that can meet and marry a mortal without trouble. So, you know, as a responsible YouTuber, I have to say, I do not suggest you try this. If you try it, don't come back to me if anything strange happens, because, you know, heck, if I know how to do it, you'd have to go look for Madeline X and ask her. 
but um, if you do try it, come back and tell me in the comments what you thought. That's all. I will see you next time for more magical things. Goodbye!